I remember Mike. Mike was a badass. Like Mike was, you know, tough as nails. The definitely the type of guy you don't want to mess with. And I remember as soon as that first, um, you know, mortar round popped up in the air, I heard Mike's voice change, and he yells over to me. He's like, "Take cover," and uh, and I was like, "If Mike's telling me that, and I can hear it in his voice, this is serious." And so first, first more round comes up, you know, hear it, ex hear it explode, not a direct hit. And then they just start popping these mortar rounds up in the air. And I'll tell you, Sean, I don't think I've ever been as scared in my life because it is like the movies, man. You know, if you, you can hear those things whistling through the air. And the difference, like when you get shot at, it happens so fast, you don't really have time to be scared, Right. But with the, with when mortar rounds incoming, like and you can hear those things whistling for five six seconds in the air. The whole time you're thinking, is this it? I wonder if if this you know if this is a direct hit. This hits hits this house. We're done. And uh, thankfully, um, these guys really didn't want. It. I could tell they didn't want an extended fight. They kind of wanted to to just. Um, see if they could hit us with the mortar rounds and then and then get the hell out of here so we didn't pinpoint their location and kill them. But because um, I think they only launched like four or five mortar rounds. One of them, I do remember one of them, though, hit on the west side of the house, probably like 60 yards from my window and frag, you know, flew up and through the window. And that, you know, that was, you know, pretty, pretty close. But I'm just glad that, you know, they, they were off on their uh, on their yeah. shots. But then um, our AOIC at the time called in Artie, and uh, yeah, from uh, I think from from Habania, and that was pretty cool to hear the big guns start you know start going off in the distance, and then the tree line that we thought we were taking um, the mortars from you know started getting started getting rocked, and and the fight the fight was over at that point. But that's always that's a scary feeling, man. Not only not only hearing mortar rounds, you know, you know, whistle whistle through the air and not knowing where they're going to hit, and you're taking small arms fire. But like when you're a, when you're in a sniper overwatch or a situation like that, you're you're usually in one of the worst neighborhoods on planet Earth, and there's like ten to fifteen of you, and you're in somebody else's city, and you're constantly thinking how many how many bad guys can they muster to send at us? Yeah. And if you know, when you know that you're probably not going to get extracted till nightfall because nobody wants to risk the vehicles in, in the daylight, which, you know, we didn't always own. We usually own the night. You know that we, we could be in for it, you know, for a while. Yeah. It's that, it's like a feeling. I've been in a couple of similar situations and uh, it's like, the feeling of helplessness. Mm. You, there's nothing you can do. Yeah. You can't figure out where it's coming from. If you can, like it's the tree line, you can't. Yeah. There's no target to shoot. You're just gonna eat it and hope it stops soon. You yeah. know, hope you don't eat it and hope it stops soon. And there's, it's completely out of your control.